Hey y'all, Man Cub from Weld.com. Today we're gonna be MIG welding uh, O30 22 gauge carbon steel. Today we're gonna be talking about sheet metal. I'm gonna show you three common mistakes in sheet metal. First one's gonna be a high low. That's this one. The second one's gonna be too big of a gap and the third one's going to be blowing through. I'm gonna show you how to fix each one uh, with this quick, simple, easy fix. So let's go ahead and start with gap and I'll show you how to fix gap really quick. So the best way to get this high low out is the tacks in the middle. So we're gonna basically take a thin cutoff wheel either on a four and a half or a die grinder. It's a little bit harder on a four and a half because it's so heavy. If you have a die grinder, it's nice and easy and nimble and you're more precise. All you do is uh, just cut the tack all the way through, try not get the gap really big. That's why you wanna use a thin wheel. Just get that metal broke loose where they just move up and down. Then you're just gonna grab a flap, flap disc or a uh, scotch Sprite pad and you're just gonna grind that flat, nice and flat, basically remove the whole tack weld. Then you're gonna just re-tack it and make sure it's completely flush, the metal. On this Everlast uh, 275 MTS, this has got a pretty neat feature, the uh, spot timer and the stitch timer. What that is, is basically when you set your spot time to, let's say, half a second, it comes on for half a second. Then when you have your stitch timer, you set that to one and a half seconds, it goes off. And it, that's one cycle. It does that all the way around. It's basically so you don't have to keep pulling your trigger like the old school way and tacking all the way down like that. You just hold it and it just, and it just goes like that the whole way. That spot timer is a nice feature for this type of work right here, what we're doing. So everything went good until we hit the middle. Of course, I'll have to manually do it. Uh, it just makes the spot timer go off a little bit faster, uh, turn off the arc. So we had to do that because our uh, grinding wheel left a little wider gap and we just had to just do it by hand. That's normal. Then after that, we got it filled up. We, it basically everything went back on its same route. It was the spot timer did its job and we just took, carried it nice, nice and easy down the groove of the puddle. You wanna make sure you don't have pinholes or anything, water coming through if you have bodywork or paint. And you wanna make sure you have penetration all the way through. Floor pans and stuff, it's not that bad. So that leads us to the next one, blowing through. That's caused from going too slow, wire speed too high, and bolts too high. And welding in one spot too long. You wanna jump around. So I'm gonna show you now how to fix it. We definitely need to adjust our bolts down and wire feed speed. So I turned my spot and stitch off. So our wire feed speed needs to be turned down and our bolts need to be turned down. So we're gonna go with our bolts. We're gonna bring that down. We got a big hole, so we need to uh, bring our bolts kind of low down. And we're gonna bring this down to like 150. We'll have to trigger that in. It might go a little bit lower, we'll go 140. We'll give that a shot. So our main goal is not welding up the hole all at once. We're gonna weld a little bit and jump, let, let's say a foot down. Let's pretend this joint's a foot, foot longer. We're gonna jump down there, weld a little bit over there, and we're just gonna keep jumping around. Go back to that hole, fill it up a little bit, jump to another spot a foot away. Just keep working back and forth until you get that hole filled up. That's what you wanna do is not put so much heat into that little spot and warp everything. So before I wanna make sure I mention this, let's put a little uh, tack weld, a little weld right here so we don't get high and low when we're putting this heat all in one spot. And also it's easier to start on the material that you have, like the thicker material right here. You got weld right here, you wanna start on that. Uh, then after you got that built up, start on that. Just don't start right here in the middle and just try to bridge across. It's way harder, all right? Always start on something that's thicker because you're putting so much heat into that part. Uh, the thick part's gonna hold that heat. The thin part won't hold the heat. It'll fall out. This is why it's good to have thin wire here. See, it looks, I, could hold, I could hold this for a little while and keep welding it up. That's nice. This little weld runs pretty good. So we're just going to fill this all up right now. Look at that, that was fast, huh? So we're going to have a little lump there, but it's all right. So we're going to go ahead and continue welding from this one all the way down. Fast and easy. We just fill it up right here, jumped over here, uh, foot down, we're pretending again, and just welding that little bit and just jumping back and forth. Everything went through, everything went good. We didn't blow through. That's why we turned our volts down a little bit and our wire feed speed. So that's blowing through. So let's move on to our next one, bad gap. We're gonna stand this up right here just like this and weld it. We're gonna weld it just like you would do a uh, door skin or putting two panels together. So we're gonna do one, this first one right here, without this backing bar. Then the second one we're gonna do with backing bar. And we're gonna see how easy it is with this backing bar. All right, so I'm gonna put a tack right here 
in case we get high low and tack right here then we can weld off them uh, off them tacks too just just walk her back and forth so that we're good we're going to start right here and work our way down we might have to jump around a little bit or probably will i'm gonna jump around It's a lot harder when you're going uh, horizontal. The heat's, pulling, heat's going up and the puddle wants to sag on you. So I'm just jumping back and forth. So I don't, I'm gonna jump back over here. Try not put the heat all in one area. But with this little piece, we'll have to. I'm just showing you how you would do it on something big. Jump back over here. Jump back over here. Just stepping it back and forth. All right, this, well, this one right here, this little hole one right here, we're going to kind of go in a circular motion and let it fill up. And let it keep filling up after it looks, closes up. Because you want to make sure you're burying that wire in there and filling it up and not leaving a pinhole. Same thing with this one. We're going to start on the thick part, squeeze the trigger, trace the outside of it like that, and come inside of it. That one's done. All right, we got our flat bar behind it. You want it right behind where your root opening's at, or your gap, excuse me. And we're just going to chill it. This one, you could, if you want to blow, if you blow through holding your trigger too long, it's it'd be all right because that aluminum bar will catch it. See how I'm holding it a little bit longer? And I want to jump away from it because it's getting hot. Jump away from it. It's all right if you blow through too much. They make ones with magnets. Like the aluminum is made like made on there or glued on there or something. So you could be sloppy with this one if you needed to. If you're starting out to learn. But it's a little faster too. It's not going to look pretty, but your, I, your main thing is getting them panels connected. And not having no pinholes after it's welded up. Generally, I wouldn't put all this heat in one area. I would walk away if this only had a little bit. But I'm just showing you what you would do. You see that? It looks like crap now, but watch this. Ta-da! See, a grinder is a welder's best friend. Uh, it looks like all in one piece. Uh, if this is a small piece, don't grind it all at once. Even a big panel, don't grind it all at once. Heat will definitely warp it. I mean, grinding, just when you grind, the heat from grinding will warp your uh, piece. Walk away a little bit or jump around both areas. You don't have no pinholes, you're fine. So I hope this helps, guys. If you guys got any questions or comments, drop them below. I'm Man Cup from Overweld.com. Weld mean, weld green. See ya.